demonstrates is simply means uh, leading stop. How can the body respond to stop bleeding? There are three major steps. There are three major steps by which the body responds quickly to stop bleeding. First of all, vasoconstriction. Laser plug and no plug. Laser plug formation. So, the first response of the body to the bleeding will be what? Vasoconstriction. You have to put in your mind that every day, every day, there are thousands or millions, millions of bleedings occur within very tiny vessels, tiny micro vessels. You know that the human body contains what? Contains meshwork meshwork of tiny micro vessels. So each day, every day, these vessels undergo bleeding due to rupture in these micro vessels, okay? And the first mechanism, the first mechanism to stop bleeding in these micro vessels is vasoconstriction. And the second way is platelet blood formation. These steps, these two steps, are responsible, responsible to stop bleeding of these small micro vessels. The body does not need the clot formation for stop bleeding of these small micro vessels because the bleeding is very small and due to the small size of those micro vessels. They are microscopic, microscopic vessels. So when they are undergoing rupture, the vasoconstriction and the platelet blood formation will be enough to stop bleeding. But sometimes, sometimes, accidentally occur to the body uh, injury or trauma. These injuries and traumas will cause severe bleeding due to external external accident due to external trauma or injury and here the body needs what needs the third mechanism to stop bleeding so if the bleeding is severe if the trauma is large or severe trauma or injury to the blood vessels or tissues so the body will consume the three mechanisms starting with vasoconstriction, passing through later blood formation, and the last mechanism which is blood formation. Is that clear? Is that clear, sorry? And clear to a certain point? Yeah. Okay. So what is vasoconstriction? And how the vasoconstriction occurs? Has vasoconstriction تمام شباب واضح بازو شو نسمع؟ how does the basal constriction occur? Basal constriction does suppose together that here is a blood vessel. And the trauma occurs to the blood vessel by sharp object, sharp object like a knife for example, like a nail. So when trauma occurs, of course there will be damage, damage to the wall of the vessel. Is that right? There will be damage to the wall of the blood vessel. So when there will be damage, quickly and spontaneously, there will be constriction in the wall of that vessel. Quickly and spontaneously. Should be spontaneously. 
تشكيل تلقائي تلقائي احسن سو ذي ويل بي كويكلي افتر تروما كويكلي اند سبونتينيوسلي وات فازو كونستريكشن ديو تو هذا الفازو كونستريكشن بالعكس ذيس فازو كونستريكشن اكرز ديو تو وات ديو تو فيست Myogenic reflex. Second, we will have these three points. Second, local module that we have. Kill the module. Correct. Practice where? Local or the coils. Contains what within it? Smooth muscle. Yes, thank you so much. Where is it? Where are you? Where are you? Smooth muscle? Smooth. smooth muscle. Okay, smooth muscle. So, at the time of injury, at the time of trauma of in, or injury, the smooth muscle of the wall of the blood vessel will respond quickly and contract. Contraction of what? Of smooth muscle of the wall of the injured blood vessel. So when there is trauma, by myogenic reflex, due to the sense of smooth muscle in the wall of that vessel, there will be rapid and quick vasoconstriction. Also, vasoconstriction occurs due to local autocoids. Local autocoids, the injured vessel itself, the cells, the cells of injured vessel wall will secrete substances, local substances here. In addition, in addition to the vasoconstriction by smooth muscle, okay, the cells of the injured wall will secrete local substances. They are called local autocoids. For example, for example, prostaglandines, Serotonins, endothelin, and others. Those auto, local autocoids will cause additional vasoconstriction. Additional vasoconstriction. Okay. The third topic is the nervous reflex. Let's suppose that you have subjected for what? For trauma, for injury. After points of time, you will suffer from what? From pain, yes, thank you so much. So because of that pain, we can consider pain as a prophylaxis, as a prophylactic mechanism. Because after trauma and feeling of pain, the pain sensation will cause reflex, nervous reflex. And this reflex will permit to the nerve terminals, nerve terminals in the wall, of the injured vessel to secrete, for example, for example, adrenaline. So when adrenaline is secreted by nerve terminals as a reflex in the injured blood vessel, this adrenaline will cause what? Vasoconstriction. So vasoconstriction in the injured blood vessel occurs by three mechanisms. First one is, repeat after me, myogenic, myogenic reflex. And this occurs due to constriction or vasoconstriction of what? Smooth muscle. Smooth muscle, yes. And local autocoid secretion. Autocoids are local substances secreted by injured blood vessel. Is that clear? And the third mechanism that causes additional vasoconstriction to stop bleeding is nervous reflex. Nervous reflex is initiated by what? By pain sensation. When pain sensation triggers, so there will be a nervous reflex. And here, the nerve terminals in the blood vessel will secrete local autocoids, representing by, for example, adrenaline. So 
these three factors together will initiate the vasoconstriction. And we have said vasoconstriction is the first step in stop bleeding. Whatever the cause, whatever the injury, whatever the severity of bleeding, if the bleeding occurs in tiny micro vessels or in large vessels, vasoconstriction must occur. Is that clear? The second mechanism or step in hemostasis in bleeding stop is the platelet blood formation. Blood means something that flows and open. Okay? Blood means something that flows and open. يعني بالعربي نقول سدادة مو صحيح؟ شايفين مثلاً كرتون أو بالعربي قميص زجاجية يحطوها فد شيء أسفيني هذا بلاد بالضبط. So the second step of stop bleeding must be the platelet blood formation. How do the platelets? How do the platelets aggregate? شو نأجريت؟ تتجمع أحسن بالضبط. How do the platelets aggregate around the opening of injured vessel. How do they initiate collection and adhesion? Should you know adhesion? Yes, yes, thank you. How do they collect and adhesion suffer from adhesion around the opening of injured vessel? You have to recall that. To recall that. A question. What's that question? Why? Why do not platelet, platelet, sorry, cause adhesion or aggregation in intact vessel? شو intact? Intact بابا معناته سليم على حاله. Intact. Not in contact. Okay. In contact, we have to be in contact. Intact. So when I say intact blood vessel, I mean the healthy, the healthy, not injured blood vessel. So, in case of intact blood vessel, the non-injured blood vessel. Why, in case of intact blood vessel, platelets do not aggregate? Yes. Yes, thank you so much. So much. Thank you so much. Because the surfaces, because the surfaces of platelets contain glycoproteins. Those glycoproteins prevent adhesion with intact endothelium of blood vessel. Here is a blood vessel. And here are some more platelets. The surfaces of platelets contain glycoproteins. Those glycoproteins prevent adhesion, prevent adhesion with intact endothelium. You know that the inner surface, the inner surface, internal surface of the blood vessel is called endothelium. Is that right? So the intact endothelium contains in nature, contains in nature proteins, of course proteins. And those proteins in nature are negatively charged. Is that right? Yeah. Proteins in nature are negatively charged. And at the same time, the surface of platelets contain what? Contain glycoproteins. And they are almost likely to be charged negatively. So there will be a repulsion, repulsion force between the endothelial wall and the platelet surface. Is that right? Yes. Uh, and can we say that uh, because uh, the presence of heparin, so the, we can't uh, uh, find a clot? Yes. Yes, thank you. We will say later. And we will find together and discover why 
the cloud process as a whole, cloud, the cloud process as a whole does not occur inside the intact nasal because of some factors like hippari. But my question was, why do not you play it left adhere to the intact endothelium? Why the platelets do not aggregate and adhere, stick, and stick with what? With the intact endothelium. Because the platelet surfaces covered with or contain glycoproteins, and these proteins will be repulsed from the intact endothelium. But in case of injury, when the blood vessel wall is injured, the collagen fibers, the collagen fibers of the injured endothelium will protrude to the inside of the blood vessel wall. And now, now, the collagen fibers will be in contact with the freely circulating blood. Is that right? And in other words, the collagen fibers now will be in contact with the platelets. Platelets, when contact with collagen fibers, they will be activated. In normal cases, in normal conditions, the platelets do not contact the collagen fibers because the collagen fibers in normal blood vessel are embedded inside the wall, embedded inside the wall, not in contact with the blood, the collagen fibers. Is that right? But in case of trauma or injury, collagen fibers, as you see here, will be protruded to the inside of the wall and later they will contact with platelets. When platelets contact with collagen fibers, platelets themselves will be activated. How do they activate? Platelets activated by secretion of large amounts of ADP. When platelets contact with collagen fibers of injured blood vessel, they will secrete, they will, I mean the platelets themselves, will secrete large amounts of what? ADP, adenosine, diphosphate and in addition to ADP they will secrete also a large amount of thromboxane A2 yes, thank you. the thromboxane A2 will cause attraction. What do you mean attraction? Attraction. Jadim, jadim. Jadim. So the secreted thromboxane A2 by the platelets will cause attraction of more numbers of platelets to aggregate, to collect around the injured area of the vessel. Is that clear? This occurred by action of thromboxane. بالمناسبه هذا السبستنس هذا اللي نقدر نعتبره فد هرمون معين فد جدا مهم بهاي العملية ما تخفف وراح نعالج ان شاء الله تاخذونه بالادوية شلون هذا يكون تارجت فد هدف لعمل بعض الادوية اللي تمنع التخفف ماشي؟ ماشي؟ زين؟ سو ثرومبوكسين اي 2 از سكريتد باي بليتلتس تو كوز مور اجريجيشن مور اتراكشن تو اذر بليتلتس اند ناو بليتلتس Will aggregate here. Should I aggregate in the gemma? The gemma. Aggregate the gemma. Assemble by action of thromboxin A2 and ADP. More platelets will aggregate or assemble around the injured area of the blood vessel. In addition to that. The surfaces of the platelets will form pseudopods. 
سی دو فوت سی دو فوت چونه من هم تبا سی دو فوت ما سمین سی دو فوت هم كم سيدو بمعنى كاذب يعني آه يعني سيدو بمعنى كاذب after aggregation after aggregation by the help of thromboxane the surfaces of the platelets themselves begin to form pseudopods pseudopods like structures these pseudopods will attach will adhere will stick to the collagen fibers. Is that clear? Let's magnify the picture. Here is a blood vessel, injured blood vessel. And here is the collagen fibers of the injured blood vessel. Now, the platelets will form pseudopod like that to adhere to the injured blood vessel to adhere to the what? to the collagen fibers like that they will attach to the collagen fibers the platelet I mean by the help of what? of pseudopod pseudopod are formed by the platelets themselves by activation or after activation by ADP and from boxing A2. Okay, now the platelets will attach to the collagen fiber. In addition to that, there is another factor which facilitates the adhesion. Facilitation, I'm going to say. Facilitate the adhesion of platelet. What that factor is von or von Willebrand factor. Von Willebrand factor is a factor formed within plasma of blood. And circulate within the plasma. When there is injury, local injury to the blood vessel, von Willebrand factor is a protein, type of protein, of course. Von Willebrand factor will leak to the injured area, to the injured vessel here. And von Willebrand factor will act like a glue, should glue, so von Willebrand factor will act like what? Like a glue to cause more adhesion, more strong adhesion between the platelets and collagen fibers of the injured blood vessel. Is that clear? Till this point, the platelet blood formation has finished. And till this point, this process is so enough to stop bleeding of micro and tiny SQ uh, vessels. But in large vessels, and if the trauma is severe, and we have open wound, for example, we need, or the body, sorry, needs the third step of hemostasis. The third step of bleeding stone. Of hemostasis. Hemostasis or bleeding storage. So if the trauma is severe, we have said that the plate that blood formation is not enough to stop bleeding. So we need third mechanism is the blood formation. In a summary, in a summary, in a summary, blood formation means fibrin formation. 
fibrin fiber, fibrin fibers formation. Fibrin fibers, fibrin fibers formation. So the cloth is formed when the final product, the fibrin fibers are formed and act like a meshwork 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 so when meshwork of fibrin fibers is formed and by the help of plates that the plug which is previously formed now cloth is formed so the cloth is a result of plates that the plug which is initially triggered and formed and the additional fibers, fibrin fibers, which act as a meshwork to that plug, to that plug, and here the cloth is formed. But how is fibrin fibers being created or being induced to form? We need to group of substances or factors. The body needs group of factors or substances. Those factors are called together, the group of factors, for example, uh, these pupils. Those students, let's suppose, or take an example, those students are the factors who are necessary to induce fibrin fibers formation. So those students, those factors are, as a group, called together the Prothrombin activator. Prothrombin activator. What is a prothrombin activator? Prothrombin activator is a group, group of factors, not one factor group of factors. Those factors act together to what? To stimulate or induce conversion of prothrombin yes, thank you, into, into thrombin. Of course, by the help of by the help of calcium, yes, thank you. By the help of calcium. And then the newly formed thrombin will act on fibrinogenin to convert them into fibrin fibers. Okay? We need for the last stage of hemostasis for cloth formation. We need the therapy. First of all, the action of prothrombin activator. And we have said prothrombin activator is a group of factors. They are together called what? Prothrombin activator. When these factors are activated, they will cause activation of prothrombin prothrombin into thrombin and thrombin will activate fibrinogen to yield to result in formation of fibrin fibers this is simple this is simple and this step also requires calcium ion هسا قبل لا نشرح على البروثرومبين اكتيفيتر اللي هما الفاكتور دول اللي نشوفهم شلون يتفاعلون نشوف وات از بروثرومبين اند وات از فايبرينوجين بروثرومبين اند فايبرينوجين بوث اوف ذيم بوث اوف ذيم ار بروتينز بروتينز ذي ار فورم وذين ذا ليفر ديلي ديلي 
and they circulate within the blood in large amounts and constant amounts daily. They are produced by liver. So when there is a disease in the liver, when there is a disease, for example, hepatitis, cirrhosis, whatever, when there is a disease in the liver, okay, there will be deficiency in thyroidology, in growth thrombin, and here the clotting process will be what? Will be hindered. Hindered yani to appal. Will be stored in the muscle body. And then the liver disease will cause deficiency. Can you deficiency, Baba? No, cause. Okay, thank you. Will cause deficiency in growth thrombin or thyroidology. So, of course, when there will be deficiency in growth thrombin, there will be no thrombin. And if there is no thrombin, there is no activation to fibrinogy. And the result, there is deficiency in fibrin, in fibrin fibers. When there is deficiency in fibrin fibers, blood clotting will not occur. Okay? So what the liver requires to create, to produce fibrinogen and prothrombin. Yes, thank you so much. What am vitamin? Yes, thank you, Zara. Vitamin K. Vitamin K is required by the liver to produce prothrombin majorly and fibrinogen. مبسط إن من لكلوت فورميشن خطوة ثالثة يعني شو هي كلوت فورميشن حتى ما تنسى يقول كلوت فورميشن هو البروثرومبين البروثرومبين تو ثرومبين and thrombin will activate fibrinogen to form fibrin fibers خلاص انتهت الكلوت now how does the prothrombin activator is being activated. The factors, we have said that prothrombin activator is about a group of factors. They are called together clotting factors or prothrombin activator. We have two ways. We have two ways or two pathways for clot formation. For clot formation. And both of these two pathways must yield, yield يعني ينتج result. Both of two pathways must yield fibrin eventually. The final result must be fibrin. We have drawn a figure before that illustrate conversion of prothrombin to thrombin, and the thrombin will stimulate fibrinogen to become fibrin. But this step must be stimulated by two pathways. Let's speak about the nature or type or source of trauma or injury. The blood vessels can be injured by either external factors or internal factors. In other words, the blood itself, the blood, the blood not only the blood vessel, the blood itself can be injured. The blood, as a unique tissue, can be injured. How does the blood injure? Yes. Uh, by destro uh, destroying... Uh, uh, and what is the cause? Yes. Yes, thank you. Damage to the content of the blood. But how? How the contents of the blood, for example, the RBC, as you have said, how the RBC can be injured or suffer from damage? Yes. For example, if some foreign bodies uh, yes, entered the blood so, 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 for example, foreign bodies, for example, viruses, bacteria, toxins, toxins, what toxins? Some poisons, toxins. What is the difference between the toxin and the poison? Huh? What is the difference between toxin and poison? Poison, poison okay. Poison. 
Okay. Contains RBC, proteins, YPC. How does the blood injure? The blood is being injured by, for example, toxins. When there is septicemia, septicemia means invasion of the blood by bacteria. Huh? In normal cases, in normal cases, do or does the bacteria enter to the blood? No. No. Why? Because of barriers, barriers and immunity. But sometimes, in some conditions, there will be a great proliferation of bacteria inside the body. And if the bacteria themselves diffuse to the blood in large numbers, the bacteria themselves diffuse to the blood in large numbers, or, or their toxins, sometimes the bacterial infection is localized. Localized. For example, there is inflammation. An inflammation of an organ, an organ, or local area of the body will be inflamed. For example, there is a large abscess here. Or there is, for example, hepatitis, inflammation of the liver. The bacteria in this case is what? Is localized. But their toxins, sometimes of bacteria secrete large amount of toxins. Their toxins will diffuse and travel to the blood. These toxins will cause injury to the RBC and also injury to the endothelial walls. Here, the source of injury is internal or intrinsic from inside the blood itself, from the inside of the body itself. So sometimes the bacteria themselves proliferate or diffuse to the circulating blood. Or the toxins, some bacteria secrete toxins when toxins diffuse to the blood, they will cause injury either to the RBC, to the endothelial wall. Here, the source of trauma or injury is an intrinsic. It is called an intrinsic. And we will call this way or this pathway an intrinsic pathway. I mean, the pathway, the source of pathway, which will stimulate specific line of prothrombin activator. Specific group of the prothrombin activator will be activated if the cause of trauma is intrinsic from internal source. So it is called an intrinsic pathway. Sometimes the source of trauma or injury to the blood vessel comes not from inside the blood itself, comes from outside. For example, uh, injury by sharp knife. Is that right? It's from outside the blood, not from inside the blood, the source of trauma, I mean. And here, if the damage or trauma occurs to the tissues, not to the blood, to the tissues, to the blood vessels themselves, rather than the blood. It is called extrinsic or external pathway of injury, okay? External or extrinsic pathway of injury. By the two ways, whether the source of the trauma is internal and now the pathway which will be activated is the intrinsic pathway, or the source of the trauma is external. What about, we are looking for what? What we need from the activation of these two pathways? We are looking for what? From Farideq. Either one or two of these pathways is activated. The result will be what? We have said that. Yes? 
Yes, thank you so much. We are looking for formation of fibrin. Fibrin. So the rate limiting, the rate limiting factor that causes blood clotting is the prothrombin activator. We are looking for formation of fibrin. So, for example, if the blood, if the blood is being damaged by toxin, for example, the clot formation, the fibrin formation pathway will be the intrinsic pathway. And the factors that will be stimulated are factor 12. So if the blood is being injured by toxin, the intrinsic pathway will activate it. I mean, there is a specific line of factors of the prothrombin activator. Specific group of these factors will be activated. Those factors are called the intrinsic pathway for clot formation. Is that clear? Okay. These factors is, or are, sorry, Factor 12, factor 11, factor 9, factor 8, and then factor 10, factor 5, prothrombin, thrombin, uh, fibrinogen, and fibrin. And if the source of trauma or injury is not from inside the blood, externally, there will be another stimulation of set of factors, of prothrombin factor. It is called extrinsic pathway. Extrinsic pathway includes activation of factor 3. Then, yes, thank you, factor 7. And then, also factor 10, 10 and 5. As a shabab, we have now understood that the source of trauma is in the blood itself, trauma by toxin, will be affected by the intrinsic pathway. That means a group of the intrinsic pathway is a group of the prothrombin activator. We can call it prothrombin activator. From them, it will be 12 to 11, until it's 12 to 11. تسعة ثمانية تمام؟ 12 11 9 8 بعد ما عندك 10 5 منك اذا كان سلف خارجي مو البلاد نفسها صار لها دمج مثلا قطع بالشريان او بالفقط منو اللي يتفعل؟ ما يتفعل 12 11 لا هسه راح ناخذ اسماء هذول الفاكتورز يتفعلون عندي ثلاثة ها سبعة بعدين 10 بعدين 5 من يتفعل الفاكتور رقم 5 راح يفعل لي البروثرومبين So we throw bean, we throw bean, five in our gene, it has five in. Shabab, the head and hand are both ways. The two both ways are clear. My activation. And now, let's take the names of the factors. The names are required. The names are required. The factors are number one, number two, number three, number four, number five, number six, number seven, number eight, number nine, number ten. Whatever the source of injury, I die either, either internally or externally, prothrombin activator, the group of factors, must be activated. Is that clear? 
So if the source of injury or trauma is from internal source, is to the blood itself, the intrinsic pathway will activate. If the source of trauma to the external tissues, to the blood vessel, not to the blood itself, the extrinsic pathway of clotting will be activated. Is that clear? Now, let's give names to the clotting factors. And it's a new word for the clotting factors. فاكتر بالاضافه الى فاكترين ما في التمييز فاكترين اثنين فالمجموع 15 دول شباب تحبونهم حفظ يعني كل ما تتونس تريد تجي تريد ارجع عليهم احفظهم حتى تعرف بعدين ان شاء الله يعني بالمراحل المتقدمه بالباطنيه بالادويه من تاخذ فد دراج دواء معين وقال لك يشتغل على هيك فاكتر وتصير طبيب وكذا حتى ما بنشوف الرمز هذا الدوك يا اول فاكتر هذا التصنيف عالمي. فالفاكتور الاول نمبر 1 از فايبرينوجين. فاكتور 2 بروترومبين. فاكتور 3 تشو برومبوبلاستيك. فاكتور 4 Factor 5, Nassiane. Factor 5, AC, Globulin. Sammone, the viral factor. Or Sidari. Factor 7, or Serum. فاكتر ثمانية وتسعة وحدة عشر سهل حفظها فاكتر ثمانية وتسعة وحدة عشر فاكتر ثمانية تقدر تسميه يا أنتي هيموفيليك فاكتر أي أنتي هيموفيليك فاكتر أي أنتي هيموفيليك فاكتر أي فاكتر تسعة تقدر تسميه أنتي هيموفيليك فاكتر بي أو تسميه إذا نسيته كريسمس فاكتر هذا تسعة كريسمس فاكتر أما فاكتر عشرة هو ستيوارد فاكتر فاكتر إدعاش أنتي هيموفليك سي أنتي هيموفليك فاكتر سي فاكتر اثناعش هو هيجمان فاكتر وفاكتر ثلاثة اللي هو فايبين Stabilizing factor. عندنا بعد ثلاث فاكتورات لكن ما يعطون تمييز بدون تمييز. خلنا نعطيكم مية من نقول 14 بس بدون تمييز شباب ما يعطون تمييز لاتيني. هي بليتلت فاكتور ولا فاكتور؟ هي بليتلت. طيب 15 عندنا فيتزيرج فيتزيرج فاكتر اللي هو هاي موليكولار ويت كالكيلين اتش ام دبليو كي هاي موليكولار هاي موليكولار ويت كالكيلين 13 وعندنا الاخير شو اسمه؟ 
letter. A B card carrying. A B card carrying or Fletcher Factor. Fletcher Factor. Fletcher Factor. Those are the prothrombin activator. All of them are called prothrombin activator. And as we have said previously, all these factors must be activated in either way, either intrinsic or extrinsic, to cause what? To cause final activation of fibrinogen to result or yield fibrin. And fibrin, when it is formed, you know, will assist the plug formation to cause blood clot. To cause blood clot. أنا شنو يجي أسألك مرات؟ أسألك ما أقول لك أنا بصراحة ما أحب الأسئلة هيك شيء تقليدية. ما أجي لك مثلا عدد لي عوامل التخف، وإذا تجيبها تجيبها فد شيء مساعد لك فلازم تحفظها. ولا أجي لك مثلا ما هو الانترنسيك باكو، لا أجي لك سؤال بي، مثلا شو أقول لك؟ أقول لك صارت عندنا حالة سبتسيميا، حالة بكتيريميا، شلون يتخثر الدم؟ فأنت مو تعطيني تحط لي إياها فيناتم، أقول لك بكتيريميا، يعني انترنسيك باك وين؟ عفوا يعني البكتيريا نفسها او السموم مالت البكتيريا نفسها انتشرت بالدم هي صارت فد انجري سورس واضح؟ هي تفعل عندنا اي ما اجيبها بس ما دام اشرت لك زين هكذا مثل صار كار اكسيدنت حادث سياره وصار هيك فد باك وي هيك باك وي وشرح لي الاكسترنسك باك وي فد معلومه شباب اخيره بقت احنا خلصنا المحاضرة اللي هي شنو مصير وات از ذا فيت اوف كلود صار عندنا كلود كلكم مجروحين كلكم صاير عندكم كلود ابسط شيء واحد يطيح وهو صغير شايفين هاي تصير الخطرة مو ورا فترة تختفي زين هذا بيسمونه فيت اوف كلود مصير الخطرة زين قبل شوية قلنا ملايين الخطر تصير يوميا بالمايكرو فيزلز جسمنا مو تمام زين هاي الخطر البلاجز وين مصيرها شلون يصيرها بقى؟ هاي فلازم نعرف ذا فيت اوف كلود اور فيت اوف بلاج فورميشن تمام؟ سواء كانت بلاج فورميشن وخلاص او كلود الكلود مع الشامله الكل بيها بليتلت وبيها فايبرين فايبرز لازم لها فيت وات از ذا فيت يو نو اباوت ذا فيت يس Yes, yeah, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Your colleague has said that the clot must undergo either of two of two phases. The clot either is being dissolved, or it is invaded by fibroblasts. And fibroblasts, you know, will produce fibers, fibers, connective tissue, fibers, collagen, uh, elastin, whatever. Sometimes you can see after the healing. You know of healing, you know, Shifa. After healing of of a wound, you can even see and feel with the fibers. صح. هذا سكار نبت تبقى. هذا fibers. This is a fate. This is one fate of the clot. Sometimes the clot is invaded. تغزى يتم غزوها. The clot itself. Is invaded by fibroblast, and you know fibroblast is a type of we can say stem cell that produce fibers. Is that right? And fibers will invade the clotted area to form scar tissue. But sometimes, and especially inside the body, inside the micro vessels, fibers or Fibroblast must not invade the micro vessels and form fibers or scar. If that occurs, this will cause blockage of the micro vessels. That right? So the clot must be dissolved. Tenhel, dissolve. And how the clot is being dissolved? It is dissolved by the aid of plasmin. Plasmin. Plasmin is produced 
also in the liver. شو اللي بارز قد مهم؟ إيش اللي قسموه؟ يصنع لك بروتينات مهم. Last one is produced inside the liver of plasminogen. Plasminogen. Plasminogen is produced in the liver and circulate within the blood when there is a clot or plug in the micro vessels. صارت البلاد وانتهى الموضوع. So plasmi plasminogen will be activated to be or to become plasmi. And plasmi like the trypsin. What is trypsin? So plasmi will digest the fibers inside the clot, the collagen fibers, the plates themselves, the factors of of clotting, the factors, because we have said that the factors are proteins. So plasmin will dissolve all that factors, will dissolve the constituents of the clot, and the clot finally will be dissolved. Okay? So what is the fate of the clot? The fate of the clot, either invasion by fibroblasts, to result fibers and final scar tissue or dissolving by plasmin. What is plasmin? Plasmin is a protein. This protein is generated or produced within the liver as plasminogen or what is called profibrinolysine. Profibrinolysine. Plasminogen is converted inside the clotted area to what? To plasmin, and plasmin will cause dissolving, or cause dissolve the clotted area. That's all for our lecture today, and thank you so much for your listening.